prepared to counter it because that should be the most common team. So you'd like to think here that, you know, we're going to see answers to this kind of core of Pokemon in the Groudon, in the Xerneas, and in that Trick Room. Yeah, so once again, guys, you can see Cody Bernheisel's team on your screen. Scrafty, Smeargle, Rayquaza, Amoongus, Xerneas, and Thunderous. And off-screen, Kaoki Sakurai's team, which is going to be Xerneas, Salamence, Groudon, Bronzong, Kang, and Smeargle. If you're Koki going into this match, what do you think is the safest bet? Uh, I think you have to bring Xerneas' game. When you see the Rayquaza, you see the Scrafty, um, and even the opposing Xerneas, depending on how Koki decide to train his Xerneas, if it's faster than Cody's Xerneas, you can get the Geomancy up before um, that Xerneas gets to move. That means you get that special defense boost to take even less damage from the opposing Xerneas, and you kind of win that mirror match if you're the faster Xerneas. Um, it does have to worry a little bit about Amoongus because it doesn't do a whole lot of damage to it, and it does fear sleep, but at the same time, Amoongus can't really do you know, a whole lot of damage to it. It can clear smog away those boosts. Mm. Um, so that's something you do have to worry about. But again, Koki has options to deal with all this in the Groudon. Groudon's great against Amoongus, great against Thunderous, if Rayquaza isn't also in, because Thunderous is known to carry hidden power water, especially when paired with Rayquaza. So and that's something Koki has to watch out for, and I'm sure he expects it. I think one of the things as well, you mentioned about which team is going to be faster. Koki's got that Trick Room option in his Bronzong. Cody doesn't actually have a form of speed control as strong as a Trick Room or a Tailwind. It looks like he might be relying a little bit more on um, using Thunder Wave. Yep, and we see the battle get underway. Here we've got Scrafty, Rayquaza as a lead from Cody Bernheisel. And we've got Koki Sakurai, who's going to be using Smeargle Xerneas, which is a combination that we saw a lot throughout the U US Nationals and also through European Nationals as well. Oh, and this is a great spot for Koki to be in here because Xerneas threatens KOs on both of these two Pokemon. Now, of course, Scrafty, you have to expect to fake out there, but uh, it's something you can just play around. You expect Cody to go for the fake out on the Xerneas, um, and then maybe Rayquaza go for an attack on Smeargle. But if Smeargle has Focus Sash, it can kind of take that attack and go for a Dark Void. Um, maybe you see Rayquaza switch out, uh, yep. potentially, but then you risk giving Smeargle a free turn. Um, you could, you could even see a, pr a prediction here from Cody and just double target down that Smeargle. But then if Xerneas, if Koki predicts that, it can just get a double knockout in exchange for just losing Smeargle. This is the thing, this this lead is so strong from Koki, it kind of puts Cody on the back foot. He might want to remove the Rayquaza from the field and try and bring out the Thunderous. And yep. if the Thunderous comes into the field, he can drop a Thunder Wave onto the Xerneas. But if it's already got the Geomancy up, he could be in big trouble. Yep. So we see Mega Rayquaza coming out onto the field there. We've got uh, Rayquaza Mega Evolving. It's going to get bring out the strong winds here. And um, we're going to see what happens now. Koki is going to be using a fake out onto the Mega Rayquaza there. And we're going to see Scrafty is also going to drop a fake out onto the Smeargle. So what is Xerneas going to do? Are we going to see a big Geomancy here, right? Oh, and we see, well, we see that Scrafty has Life Orb, actually. So that's really interesting. But Koki totally winning that first turn. Oh, look how little damage that did. I think we might be seeing an Assault Vest yep, Rayquaza here. So and there's too. a Moody Boost. What do we looks, think? Looks like Accuracy Rose for Smeargle. So Dark Void could be hitting pretty, you know, it's definitely something to watch out for. Now that you know it's faster than Scrafty, um, not only is that good knowledge for games two and three, it's going to be important for this game here. So much information given up in this first turn, and it looks like Koki actually probably got the most out of it. We've got that Assault Vest on the Rayquaza there, and we've also got the um, the Life Orb on the Scrafty, which is not an item that you see a lot. No, because Scrafty normally more of a supportive Pokemon trained to be very bulky, so that it can take advantage of things like Fake Out, reusing Intimidate by switching in and out, and of course, Super Fang, which doesn't rely on your attack stat at all. It just always does 50%, so not something we see too much. And there goes the Scrafty, as you say, Ray. Probably saving it in the back of the later so he can get a big Intimidate off. And in comes his own Xerneas, Cody bringing the Xerneas there. And so we're going to have to see how Koki's going to be able to react to this. We've got the Fairy Oil coming out for Xerneas on the side of the field. And here we go, the Follow Me, going to detract attention away from his restricted legendary Pokemon. And the Rayquaza on, Koki's side of the fi oh, sorry, on Cody's side of the field is now going to launch a big Dragon Ascent. I love this animation so much. It's going to launch directly down to that Smeargle. It's going to pick up the knockout. So once again, Smeargle has been uh, very pivotal in protecting Xerneas and allowing it to possibly get up a big boost. It has the Fake Out turn one, and now this Follow Me. Xerneas is in prime position to just sweep this game. Oh, and there's a Dazzling Game coming out from Ray uh, from Xerneas there, it's going to pick up the knockout onto Rayquaza and leave Xerneas with just under half HP. So Koki 
not even wanting to go for that Geomancy option yet. Being very aggressive here. No, he saw it. He just wanted to pick up that KO on Rayquaza. I like that move because you have to imagine he has Groudon on the, in the back. I think he was trying to be a little bit safer. He does have to still worry about the Amoongus potential with the clear smog. Uh, maybe even a uh, red card. So there are things to worry about. I like that move of just straight up going for the Dazzling Gleam, though. Yeah, it made sure that uh, the Xerneas on Cody's side of the field isn't going to be at full HP, so it means it's easier for his restricted legendary Pokemon to come in and deal with that. If Koki decides to bring his Kangaskhan in, it could do well against his Xerneas as well. Yep, and of course it was a Scrafty in too, but you know, you can't imagine Scrafty stays in against that, so regardless of what came in, just getting a little bit of damage on it worked, and he got the critical hit, so he did get a whole bunch of damage on that Xerneas. So. Yeah, and so here we see the Kangaskhan has hit the field for Koki Sakurai, and for Cody we've got that Amoongus, and Kangaskhan and Amoongus have a love-hate relationship. A lot of the time in uh, BGC 15 last year, we saw them paired together so that Kangaskhan could get big power-up punches off. But now that it's, uh, and also with the Rocky Helm, it was doing a lot of damage from the opposite side of the field. But now we can see that Kangaskhan can put fake out pressure onto um, Cody's side of the field, and Amoongus can redirect the attacks away so that Xerneas can get a boost. Yeah, but this is just so tough because of how low Xerneas already is, and because uh, Koki has the fake out pressure from Kangaskhan, uh, so that'll move before Rage Power. And then, of course, his own Xerneas has Dazzling Gleam, so he doesn't even have to worry about the Rage Powder. And here we go. We're going to see Kangaskhan Mega Evolving now. So are we going to see a Fake Out going into Cody's side of the field, or are we going to see some big damage coming out from that Kangaskhan? We're going to see Xerneas on um, Cody's side of the field. Going to get a Protect. Doesn't want to take a Fake Out or any sort of damage from the Kangaskhan. Wants to survive for one more turn. And we're going to see the Fake Out going onto the Amoongus there. It's going to hit twice due to Mega Kangaskhan's Parental Bond ability. And then it's actually going to activate. Is that a red card? That's a red card. There we go. So Kangaskhan is going to be forced back onto the bench for Koki Sakurai. And He's going to be bringing in his primal oh, Groudon, which is uh, not probably, a good trade. Well, actually, I think it's a good, great trade for Koki. Yeah, but great Koki, trade for Koki, not for Cody, though. <laughs> Cody's not going to be having fun seeing that Pokemon come in. So we've got the primal Groudon now hitting the field. Desolate Land will be set up. And without the um, Mega Rayquaza on Cody's side of the field, Groudon's in a great spot. There's just no answer to this uh, for what Cody has remaining. Uh, now the Geomancy gets set up, so wow. So um, a big swing in momentum for Koki Sakurai here. Yeah, because a Dazzling Gleam can take out the Xerneas, uh, Rage Powder can't redirect that, and Groudon can easily take out Amoongus, and all that's in the back is a Scrafty, and that just is no match for this boosted Xerneas and even the Groudon, so... Yeah, and Amoongus has such a, a different role in this uh, metagame than it does from previous years, because um, the Rage Powder, again, as you said, doesn't redirect all these big spread attacks that these legendary Pokémon are known for. So um, it does have a resist against um, against Xerneas, mm -hmm. and that's probably why uh, Cody would want to use it. Yep. But in the position he's in, it's not doing anything at all. No, right now there's nothing it can do, but uh, that was good knowledge for Koki actually finding out that it has red cards, so he is going to have to watch out if in future games he gets his Xerneas set up, try and avoid getting red carded out by the Amoongus. So um, a lot of knowledge, actually. I'd say this match, not only is Koki going to win, but I'd say he got the advantage when it comes to the knowledge gain. I think he actually gained more knowledge about Cody's team that matters than Cody really gained about his team. So I think Koki, he's very happy winning this game and he's very confident going into games two and then maybe even a game three. So there's that protect coming out from the Xerneas on Koki's side of the field and a matching boost coming out from Cody, Cody Bernheisel. And you're gonna see the special attack raised by two stages, special defense raised by two stages and speed. The Geomancy move is just so powerful. Yeah, it really is. So we've got the uh, two Geomancy boosted Xerneas on the off side of the field. We've got a Moonblast coming out onto the protected Xerneas. Oh, sorry, no, not at all, sorry. We've got the big eruption coming out onto the Amoongus, which is going to pick up the knockout. Xerneas is going to survive with a sliver of health, and Scrafty is going to come back in, but it's a difficult position for Cody. Yeah, there's not really a way to come back from this. Um, I'm curious, though, why Koki let Cody set up the Geomancy there with his Xerneas. I don't think he had anything to fear. He could have just attacked. Mm. Um, so I'm not sure why he didn't, but he's still in a great spot to win this game. He is. He is. So uh, I think the, the main thing for Cody now is to try and get as much information as he can. He's already seen that this Groudon has access to the special move Eruption, so is he, he'll try and find out if um, Koki's Groudon is fully specially invested with lots of special moves, or maybe it's a mixed variant. Yep, that's definitely something I don't expect Koki to give up here. Yeah. Um, especially now that he's intimidated, any eruption will do plenty of damage. I Not only does he want to keep the knowledge uh, from getting over to Cody, he just, eruption is just simply the best move right now, so. 
Yeah, so we've got two booster Xenius on the field, but one is in much better positions. It looks like we're going to go to um, a gay two very shortly. So will Cody see this one out? And actually launch a fake out onto the Xenius there, which is gonna, not going to be able to move this turn at all, taking a little bit of life orb damage there on the Scrafty. The opposing Xerneas is going to launch a Moonblast onto Koki's Xerneas. How much will that do? It does a, a fair amount of damage. Obviously, with the Geomancy boost, its special defense is raised, and a big eruption coming out from Cody, uh, from uh, Koki's Groudon, which is going to pick up the knockout on both Pokemon. But Cody now knows how much his boosted Xerneas does against Koki's boosted Xerneas. Yep, and he's got an idea for the speeds of each, so... Uh, great knowledge for Koki going into game two. I think he's got all the knowledge he needs to kind of make this a quick series. Mm. Um, he played great in game one. You can't understate that enough because turn one, uh, he led perfectly against Cody's leads. And then, you know, it's kind of easy to uh, kind of think as a spectator that, yeah, he's in a great spot turn one, so he's just going to win the game. But no, there were a lot of options Cody could have done um, to try and pull himself out of that bad match matchup, which he did try and do. It's just Koki just made the best move possible each turn at the very beginning, and there was just no answer from Cody simply because, you know, just how powerful Koki's team was and how he led. Um, it felt like there were two key momentum points, right? Mm -hmm. It felt like the lead was very strongly in Koki's favor, and then it felt like when uh, Cody brought in that Amoongus and the red card activated, it kind of just sealed the deal. When Groudon hit the field for free, it, it was did. impressive. Like, Xerneas protected itself, Amoongus came in, the red card activated on the Kangaskhan, and then Groudon was in the perfect position. Yeah, that combination of Groudon and a boosted Xerneas, there's almost no answer to it just because of how well they cover each other. Um, and I'm not really sure if I'm Cody what I want to do here to kind of change things up. I think I have to look towards uh, either Smeargle or Thunderous, if not both. Mm. Um, I'm really not sure Scrafty is the Pokemon for this matchup. I know it's good, you know, it's slow, so it's good in Trick Room. It's good against the Bronzong. It just, it's not bulky. We saw the Life Orb, so we can't imagine it's that bulky. Intimidate's nice against Groudon, but we saw it has Eruption. I really don't think Scrafty is a good idea to bring going into game two. I think that's one of the switches that Cody needs to make. I think he needs to swap out the Scrafty, either for the Smeargle or for the Thunderous. I just, I, I don't know. There's, it's it's tough. He's got a, I see his win condition as this Xerneas here. Um, using Rayquaza in combination, whether it's with Thunderous or even if it's by itself, if it has a water move to take out the Groudon and then just use Xerneas to sweep. Mm. It's just going to be so tough because Koki does have a Bronzong. He's got that Trick Room option, which is loitering in the back. <laughs> yeah, it's always risky to set up Trick Room, though, against Amoongus and against Smeargle, so I'm not sure he even needs Trick Room, especially after um, he saw how his Xerneas and Groudon compare in speed to Cody's Pokemon. I think he's perfectly comfortable uh, not using Trick Room. Of course, if he gets paralyzed from the Thunderous, if Cody makes that adjustment, then he does have the Trick Room option but I just think Koki's team has everything to cover what Cody might do and be able to emerge victorious. Well, let's see how this second game in round one Swiss here at the World Championships live in San Francisco is going to go. Koki Sakurai mixing things up. He's bringing the Kangaskhan and Xerneas combination. And same from Cody, a bit of a switch out here. Thunderous and Xerneas on his side of the field. So the adjustment for Thunderous there, probably looking to taunt or Thunder Wave onto that Xerneas. Yeah, uh, I like the adjustment here bringing Thunderous. Uh, I'm curious how it was trained and what kind of item it has because we've seen Focus Sash Thunderous, which are trained almost entirely in speed and special attack. That could be knocked out by Kangaskhan in one hit because of the parental bond bypassing the Focus Sash. But there's also a chance it's a bulky Thunderous with a Citrus Berry where Kangaskhan won't be able to knock it out in one hit. So I think that will change how Cody plays his matchup based on what his Thunderous is using as an item, how it's trained, um, and then, like you said, whether it wants to go for a taunt on the Xerneas or just spread paralysis here. Well, Koki obviously fearing the idea of a paralysis here, so he's going to bring in his fun he's going to bring in his Groudon, which is going to set up the Desolate Land ability. But more importantly, has that immunity to Electric type attacks, which means Thunder Wave won't affect it. Yeah, so it's great against Xerneas and Groudon. At least, or sorry, it's great against Xerneas and Thunderous. At least for now, there is a chance that Rayquaza comes in and a Hidden Power Water comes in. But we'll, I'm really curious to see what this Kangaskhan does. Yep. So we're going to get the Mega Evolution coming out here. Kangaskhan going to be releasing the baby from the pouch. I'm going to get that Parental Bond ability, going to attack twice. The second attack obviously doing a little bit less damage, but still a great advantage to have. And we're going to see the Fake Out coming out onto the Xerneas here. What is the Thunderous on Cody's side of the field going to do? That is going to be 
be a Thunder Wave onto the Kangaskhan there. So a good read from Cody. Didn't want to fall into the trap of getting that hitting the Xerneas slot with a Thunder Wave. Yeah, uh, great Thunder Wave there. Uh, you had to imagine that Groudon would be coming in, and he guessed correctly which slot. Um, so very well played by Cody there. Um, I, I'm i interested because Koki played that kind of safe. He went for the fake out on Xerneas, didn't want it to get the Geomancy up, so I can understand that. It's always scary letting a Xerneas get set up on turn one. Yeah. Um, but this, th this Thunderous could prove to be a problem. Um, so maybe getting a, targeting a double edge on it last turn, you know, maybe that was a, an option to try and knock it out. And yep. if, it, if you do see it's bulky and has Citrus Berry, then in game three, you have the knowledge there. Um, I mean, but even right now, you can still keep it in and go for a double edge. You just have to worry about being fully paralyzed. And of course, you have to wonder or worry about Xerneas switching in for Rayquaza and the Thunderous going for an HP water. Well, hit here power we go. Water. So Ray Rizzo might have just called out what's going to happen directly in this turn. We've got the Rayquaza coming in, which is going to activate Airlock, which means Desert Land's ability to soak up water-type attacks isn't going to be able to happen. There's a hidden power from the Thunderous onto the Groudon, which survives with a lot of HP there. 77, 77 out of it is just under a sliver of health, and there goes the eruption. Going to do a big bit of damage to Thunderous, a bit of a chunk there. Rayquaza not going to be taking that much damage at all. And a big double edge coming onto that slot from Kangaskhan. Oh! And Xernia, sorry, and uh, Rayquaza survives with just a sliver of health. Yeah, barely not enough to take out the Rayquaza, but we see how bulky Thunderous probably is because its hidden power did not do a whole lot of damage to that Groudon. No, so it looks like it looks like Cody's team is built with bulk in mind. You've got what looks like an assault vest Rayquaza here, mm -hmm. um, which just didn't take anything from that eruption at all. Obviously, uh, eruption is a HP-based attack, mm -hmm. so when uh, Groudon's HP is a little bit low, it doesn't do that much damage. But it's uh, it just took it so well. Yeah, and of course the sun's not up because of the airlock, so that helps as well. Um, but I think that. K Koki does get the knowledge here. He has to imagine Thunderous is bulky because of how little damage that did. So even though he didn't get to attack it, really, he might not be able to tell based on that eruption damage or just how bulky the Thunderous is. But how much damage Thunderous did to Groudon, I think, has to tell him that Thunderous is probably bulky, not that offensive. So we're going to see another Mega Revolution coming out here. Mega Rayquaza will hit the field once again. And so even with that airlock ability, he thought, no, I want to put the weather in my control. We're going to see the Delta Stream active now. We're just going to reduce um, Rayquaza's, uh, reduce his uh, super type, super effective damage. But we're going to see also the H HP uh, water coming out onto the Groudon. With a critical hit, it's going to pick up the KO there. So that's one restricted legendary down for Koki Sakurai. And here comes a Dragon Ascent, which is going to come out onto that Kangasan slot. So really dealing a lot of damage from Cody's side of the field. It's going to pick up the KO too. So a really great turn there for Cody. Oh, great turn for Cody. Double knockout. Didn't lose anything because Koki didn't get a chance to attack. Um, I don't know. Sucker Punch, I'm sure he was fearing an extreme speed, which would have made Sucker Punch uh, useless and just fail. But... When you're at a point where you would get one in code by the Rayquaza, I think that's something you have to go for, at least. Mm. So, we saw that the two Pokémon have left the field, the Koki side of the field. He's, on he's only got two Pokémon left now, but what a pairing to bring out. Smeargle and Xerneas, always a yeah. threat. Certainly still winnable for Koki here, because Smeargle can fake out, and that, that would actually probably knock out the Rayquaza here. But, he does risk Xerneas getting paralyzed, so I don't know if he wants to do that. Um, he's also got Follow Me ability, in case he wants to redirect that uh, Rayquaza's attack and then redirect the Thunder Wave from Thunderous, um, since that Thunder Wave would move before Rayquaza's attack. He could also try and predict something, maybe go for a Fake Out on Thunderous. Maybe he feels like at this point he's got to try something like that, something a little riskier. Let Rayquaza get an attack on Xerneas, get the Geomancy up, and then the following turn, go for a follow me and then just uh, Dazzling Gleam, both Thunderous and Rayquaza. Well, Koki's actually going to be protecting his Xerneas here. A Taunt going to come out onto that Smeargle. What item are we going to see here? We're going to see the Mental Herb item there, so the Taunt won't affect Smeargle. Rayquaza is going to attack into the Protect on Xerneas, and Koki's very happy with that play, and here comes the Dark Void. Which Pokemon is going to be which Pokemon are going to be put to sleep right now? We're going to see Sleep coming out on Rayquaza. Is it going to pick up the Sleep on Thunderous as well? It is. Both wow, Pokemon are Cody's side turning of the field. Point. This is why Smoogle is so dangerous. We've got the Moody Boost coming out here. We're going wow. to see... Looks uh, like just a pointless boost for attack there for Smeargle, so not really going to matter too drops. much. Yeah, but at this point, I don't know how important that is because both Rayquaza and Thunderous are asleep. Uh, Xerneas is going to be able to get the Geomancy up, and 
boy, Koki could actually take this game here from this point. Yes, he could. So we've got the um, Smeagol with a slight speed drop here. It really just depends on um, how, how Cody will be able to deal with the Pokemon he's got in the back. But with this lead, this momentum swing that Koki's managed to get with that free switch into both uh, Smeargle and Xerneas alongside each other, he's in such a great position. Yeah, that mental are really proving useful for Smeargle there, being able to fire off a Dark Void despite getting taunted. So you can see that both Thunderous and Mega Rayquaza have taken their first turn of sleep here, and Koki's just going to play it safe, get that boost up while he still can, and um, make sure that he's ready for the later, later game. Yep, so that turn, uh, Rayquaza and Thunderous were guaranteed to stay asleep. So this following turn, this upcoming turn, they do have a chance to wake up. It's not super likely, but it's a possibility. So I'm curious to see if Koki decides to go for a follow me here to prevent a potential wake up. It looked wow, like Smeagol we went see. for the, the Dark Void once again there. Yeah, we see some more useless boosts. That looked like a special attack boost and then an attack drop. So again, Smeargle, I don't even know if it will really do anything other than follow me for the rest of this game. Uh, of course, it depends what else is paired with Xerneas in the back for Cody. So it, these boosts being irrelevant could matter. It looked like there was an extreme speed trying to come out from the Mega Raid Quasar on Cody's side of the field. Here goes the follow me from Smeargle. Or it might have been a Protect, actually. But um, we've got the Thunderous there. He's going to be asleep as well. So both Pokemon on Cody's side of the field remaining asleep. And we're going to see the big Dazzling Gleam coming out from Koki Sakurai here. It's going to pick up both knockouts there. So once again, we've seen um, Cody's side of the field being cleared. He's got a free switch into the Pokemon in the back, but he's facing off against such a strong position. Yep, and just in case the Moongus is in the back, Red Card won't actually do anything because this Xerneas is the last one out. So we see an Accuracy Rise and another Attack Drop. It's, again, nothing too important. Accuracy rise could matter, but with the speed drop that Sm Smiggles already had, um, I don't think Dark, Dark Void is going to be um, particularly helpful there. Now that you see the Amoongus, it could potentially be because Smeargle will be faster than it, even despite the speed drop from earlier. So do you see um, Koki protecting his Xerneas here and trying to get the Dark Void off of his Smeargle or just launching attacks? No, I don't. I just launch attacks because because of the accuracy boost to Smeargle, Dark Void won't miss. And even though it got the speed drop, it'll still be faster than Amoongus. And I have to imagine, since Koki went with the Mental Orb rather than a Focus Sash, it has to be trained for uh, Xerneas not to be able to knock it out with a Moon Blast. So I think if you're Koki, you let it take that attack. Uh, if it even decides to target the Smeargle with it, and then go for the Dark Void and attack with your Xerneas. Ooh, there's a big Moonblast coming out. It's going to pick up the, the KO onto the Xerneas, which had a little bit of health taken away from the Kangaskhan, but so much damage there. There's the Dark Void, Smeargle outspeeding Amoongus. It's going to be put to sleep, and that has to be game. Yep, that's game. Amoongus won't be able to take down the Smeargle and the Xerneas. So Koki Sakurai taking it two games to zero. Really strong performance there coming out from Koki. And he's going to progress through to uh, the second round of Swiss here at the World Championships live in San Francisco. And Cody taking this first loss in his first round, but it's not over for him. No, he can afford two match losses. So uh, he did go up against a very good Japanese player uh, in round one. So even though he's got to be feeling bad about losing, he has to feel like... Well, I lost to somebody really good. Um, he's still got to believe in himself. He can't let this loss get to him. He's just got to keep playing, and you know he knows he can advance still. Oh, well, and the, the Amoongus is going to wake up here. So take a Moonblast there. It's going to drop a Spore onto the Smeargle, which is going to be put to sleep. Maybe Cody is just looking to get as much information as he can about the build of Koki's team in case he has to play him further on in the competition. Yeah, you never know in case uh, both these players make it to day two, then there's always a chance they match up again. So yeah, it's still useful to get more information. And also, he's on the live stream of the World Championships in 2016. I'd want to make the most of my experience there. Yeah, it's not uh, every day you get to be in this situation if you're Cody, so uh, certainly still trying to fight through and see if he can, you know, maybe at least put up a show, put up, get some damage done. So Koki is going to protect his Xerneas there and uh, allow Smeagol to take its first turn of sleep. Um, not sure what attack Amoongus went for onto the uh, Xerneas, possibly a Spore, but maybe a clear smog. Also a possibility. So here we go, the second Moonblast coming out from the Xerneas here. It's going to do a big chunk to Amoongus, which is going to survive. Being able to survive two boosted uh, Moonblasts is a really good thing to have for your Amoongus there. Yeah, because of how powerful Xerneas is after that boost, it is still able to uh, take two Moonblasts. So 
Cody definitely expecting this matchup. As you can tell, he did give it the red card. So he was expecting to use this Amoongus against Xerneas a lot this weekend. Um, so we do see the result of his training there, being able to take two Moonblasts. So that's... You can see yeah. that Cody has definitely thought out this team, and he's he's got a pretty good team for the rest of day one. Um, so I'm excited to see how he'll do if he can recover from this loss. But I mean, look at him. He's still smiling. He's um, yeah, looking, he's having a cool good time. As a, cool as a cucumber here, really just showing the power of his Amoongus. And there's the sleep from uh, Koki's side of the field. So everyone's been sleeping the last three turns, and I think we're just gonna have to see how Koki's be, if Zernia's gonna be wake up and just take this match. Yeah, there's really hasn't been anything for uh, Cody Zamungus to be able to do to be able to win this game. But it's you know he's on stream. He certainly wants to put up a show, put some Pokemon to sleep. Yep. Um, and there we see a and um, not go down so easily. Another so. turn of sleep from Amoongus. and look, <laughs> both he's player, loving it. Both players are laughing because everybody's just asleep. They can't end this game no matter how hard they try. <laughs> That's the thing, though. I mean, a lot of players have traveled from other countries. Jet lag is a thing, and these Pokemon are obviously feeling it too. Just having to make the most of the sleep that they can get. <laughs> I mean, I've come, I've come from London, so um, I'm a little bit jet lagged as well. My body clock hasn't adjusted, so I could, I could be like a Moongus or Xerneas here and just drop off at any point. But yeah. luckily, exciting games like this keep me awake. Yeah, I'm not as uh, jet lagged as you, because you're coming from London. I'm from the East Coast, so I'm still a little jet lagged, but <laughs> nowhere near as jet lagged as you must be. But I, I would certainly, I can relate to these Pokemon loving to get their sleep. Yep, Cody's happy. He's got the full three turns of sleep there onto the Xerneas on Koki's side of the field. And Koki must just be thinking, please let me knock out this Amoongus. Yeah. <laughs> I would love to knock out this Amoongus right now. Yeah, he's he's been so close to the win for this match for like so many turns now. He's just waiting for the Xerneas to wake up just so he can finally claim victory in this match. I mean, especially seeing as he wants to be able to prepare for the next round as fast as he can. Right, the longer you're sitting up here, the less you get to maybe get something to drink, uh, get a snack to eat in between rounds. But um, I think the- Just the, relax even. The best thing to take in mind for Cody though is that he has made an impression on Koki Sakurai. He has. His Amoongus has sat there being as annoying as it can and just saying, I will survive all your attacks and I will put you to sleep and yep. there is nothing regardless, that you can do. Yep, regardless of how Koki does, even if he ends up winning the World Championship, he won't forget this match. He'll remember <laughs> just how difficult it was to knock out this Amoongus. And so, <laughs> but again, the Protect coming out from Amoongus on Cody's side of the field. That's one more turn that Koki cannot pick up this win. And you got to think that when Koki gets back to his hotel room later on tonight, He'll print out a picture of a Moongus above his bed, never <laughs> to forget what happened this day. This match might even go to time. It looks like it's going to. We've got 27 le seconds left on the clock. Are we going to be able to see the um, the Moonblast coming out from the Xerneas, or is Cody going to take his time and take it down to time? Yeah, it, regardless, uh, Cookie will end up victorious here. Just one Pokemon remaining against two, and that one Pokemon has only got a sliver of HP left, so... But that is a, a good thing to bear in mind for those watching at home. The, not, not only do you have to... The two ways that you can win a match in the Pokemon Video Game Championship is to knock out all your opposing Pokemon or take it down to timer. And the, the average HP of the Pokemon on your side of the field against your opponent will decide who's the winner. And then we see the Moonblast coming out from Koki's Xerneas onto the Amoongus. And both players looking like they've had a really good time. <laughs> Amoongus, not so much, but it did what it wanted to do.